like to see me make homemade rolls? <laughs> well, I'm gonna do that today, and it's a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit longer process because <clears throat> there's so many steps, and I may have to stop two or three times in the video, so. But you guys will be able to, do, to make rolls for Thanksgiving dinner, yeah. Okay, so I've got all my ingredients out here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is take two cups of milk and I'm gonna put it in the microwave for three minutes. Now, um, I've had a different microwave for a while and it doesn't heat up as much, but usually on my bigger microwave that I had, I did it for two minutes and, and 50 seconds. But I'm gonna put this in for three minutes. I'm gonna do that right now. that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a stick of butter in this little saucepan and, and melt it and get it melted while that milk's getting hot. So I'll put this back on the stove. Then I'm gonna run some water over here and get it warm, about like baby's bath water, uh, maybe, but, uh, so it's not too hot on your wrist. Put a cup of water in a measuring cup. Two tablespoons of yeast. Now I like to use bread machine yeast, but you know yeast has been kind of hard to come by. So I'm just going to sprinkle in two tablespoons of yeast. And we're going to put in a tablespoon of flour, or not flour, tablespoon of sugar. And that helps the yeast to get activated. By the way, we're going to do these all in the mixer. Now, if your yeast doesn't start foaming up, then you're going to have to start over. You've either got your yeast or your water is not warm enough or it's too hot. But go ahead and stir all the yeast up in the water and get it dissolved. And then just leave it set and let it start working. And I do prefer the uh, bread machine yeast. It works faster. And when I get the, the dough done, the first round that we do, it usually only takes it about uh, 30 minutes to raise, but this may take a little longer, and that's why I'm gonna have to stop uh, the video to get some of this stuff done. Okay, I've got, I think I've got it all dissolved up good, and I'm gonna set it over here to the side, and I'm gonna get the milk out of the microwave. It's sort of what you'd call scalded. So I'm gonna pour it into the mixer. It's 
two cups. And then uh, I'm going to check on the butter. It's almost ready. I think I can go ahead and pour it in there and it probably will finish melting with the warm milk because it's almost, almost there. I'm going to pour the butter in. This is pretty, pretty easy to do. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna add is the two, two cups of flour. One. And two. To that, I'm going to add um, the salt, and I put in two and a half uh, teaspoons of salt, or salt, yeah, two and a half teaspoons of salt. The next thing that I'm going to add, and if you can see, this is starting to foam up. Uh, I'm going to add a fourth a cup of potato flakes, instant potatoes. If you have real potatoes that you've mashed, you can add those. This makes the, the bread more very flavorful. So I'm mixing in the potato flakes. And that warm water will help it turn into to potatoes uh, better. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to add is a cup of sugar. going to add the yeast. It's all ready to go in. Real frothy. Okay. And then we're going to we're going to beat an egg up in here in this little cup, but I'm going to put more flour in before I add the egg because the milk is still pretty warm and I don't want to cook the egg. So I'm going to beat it up, but I'm going to add some more flour first. Two more cups of flour. There's one. When I get this added, then I'm going to pull the camera over here and show you what it's looking like. Now that should. Uh, cool the batter down enough where it won't cook the egg. Wipe my hands off. Gonna add the egg in. Can you see the batter? Okay. 
You know how, well, if you've ever made bread before, you know, you usually have to stand and knead, knead, and knead it. But with the mixer and doing it in the mixer, you don't have to do that. You let the mixer do it for you, which is a big help, very big help. Now it says to let your dough rest uh, for 10 minutes. You don't really, I don't always do that. Uh, but I, and I don't really have 10 minutes to be letting it rest. And it doesn't hurt it, but it, it just says to let it rest 10 minutes. And it will be on the recipe if you want to do that. But I'm always in a hurry and don't do it. And it, they're fine. They raise up fine. Now I'm going to show you the, uh, the bowl that I'm going to put them in to let them raise. This is a Tupperware bowl, but I cannot tell you the size of it. But you can see by my hands how big it is. So it's pretty good size. That for this amount of dough, it's just right. It fits in here and then when it gets up to the top and raises that much, then I know it's done. It's through, it's raised enough and it's got enough room to raise. So we're going to add two more cups of flour. This usually makes about 20 rolls, 20 biscuits, or light bread, light bread rolls, whatever you want to call it, dinner rolls. this beat on high for two, about two minutes. This is how I, now, if you want, you can use um, the dough hook, but I never do. I always use the paddle, which is like this, only without the scraper on the side. I just go ahead and use the paddle. But I am going to have to add a little bit more flour. I'm gonna let that beat and then I'm gonna I'll be back. I'll come back. I don't I, I don't think you need to watch want to watch all of that. Okay, I went ahead and added one more cup of flour and um, it does kind of make the dough come up real high on the on the mixer, but it it will all scrape off and get get that you can get it cleaned up real quick. I'm gonna get all this scraped off of the beater and uh, try to get the dough into the bowl if my arms will let me. Sorry about that. Got a phone call and I had to restart it. Okay. Show you what the dough looks like if I don't tip it out into the floor. And like I said, it's real, um, it's real, um, moist. 
not like it would be if you were getting ready to make rolls out of it. It's really moist. That's the way it looks. And I'm gonna see if I can get it. I have trouble lifting heavy stuff, so I may have a little bit of difficulty here. But you can see how it will come out of the pan on its own. Sorry about this. I'm gonna have to put my bowl down and scrape on it some more. Get the rest of it out. I almost need a helper. I almost need a helper. I've already oiled this bowl with just uh, corn oil. You can use whatever you want. You can use olive oil or whatever. Uh, I just uh, used the corn oil and uh, I coated the sides and the bottom and there's a little bit of extra oil down into the bottom and I'll show you what I do because I try to cover the, the dough. And I kind of dip my hands down into the oil and get them greased up and get this dough off of the scraper. Okay, what I'm doing is turning the dough over to make sure that it's coated with the oil on all the sides. And then I'm going to drain off the extra oil over here in a measuring cup because I don't need any extra in there. But I just wanted it enough so that I could get all the dough covered. And then it's going to be ready to, to raise. It's a sliding all over the pan. Okay, I'm going to cover it. And it's best if you use a damp towel that's been in, in warm water. Run it in, or, or even hot water is better, and wring it out real good. And then lay the rag over the uh, dough. See if I can do that real quick for it. Before we hop off, and then I'm going to let it raise, and I'll let you know how long it took. That, but like I said, if I use um, bread machine yeast, it usually only takes a, about 30 minutes to raise. Of course, if your room is cold or you've got air conditioning on or anything like that, it takes longer for it to raise. But if your kitchen's nice and warm, it doesn't. No. So I've got this in hot water and I'm just laying it over the top of it. And then we'll time it. And we'll be back and let you see what we do next. I'm back. And I'm going to let you see how the dough raised up. Clear to the top of the pan. It did real good. But it took uh, um. Most it took uh, almost an hour for this to get this much raised. Usually, with the bread machine yeast, it takes about 30 minutes, but it's not real warm in the house today, it's, it's kind of cool, so that might have been another reason. And what we're gonna do now is it's ready to make into rolls, and I'm gonna put some flour on the counter. And I was going to tell you, the potatoes flakes that I put in there, it makes it have, it just gives it a good rich flavor. But you don't have to use those. You don't have to use any potatoes if you don't want to. I've made this for years without them. But I just, my grand, or my aunt always put potatoes in her 
light bread and um, it, they were so good and I just like to add them sometimes. And that's why I did with these. I, it just gives them a good rich flavor. And see how this just kind of comes out of the, <laughs> the bowl. It just kind of slides on out of the bowl. And uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna scrape that off the side. Okay, I'm gonna put a little flour on on here. I don't think you can see it so very well. because it's really uh, moist and sticky, but that's the way we want it. And I'm gonna fold in the dough and get this yeast or flour worked into it. And then I'm gonna roll it over like I did my biscuits, and I'm gonna cut this dough in half so it's not so much for me to work with. And this is my handy dandy little food scraper and counter scraper and I use it for my roll. So I'm gonna put these this batch just back into the bowl for right now and I'm gonna roll these out and I don't know if you can see. Anyway I'm gonna work the rest of that flour in just kind of Push the dough into itself, and uh, then I'm gonna just squeeze the dough out into a long, and I need to get 10 rolls out of this bunch of dough right here. So, what I do is I usually cut it in half, and then that gives me, I need to get, I know I need to get five rolls out of each one of these. I'm just rolling the dough out, and I, one, two, three, only got four and I've got a little bit of dough left so I may have some extra dough in this one one two three four five if you don't have quite enough dough in each one I mean, you can measure them different it doesn't matter I only do this because I'm, I don't care if they're exactly perfect, but I do like to try to get about 10 rolls. And what I'm gonna do is just roll these up kind of in a ball. Can you see what I'm doing? And uh, I'm gonna, there's, I have oil in the pan here, oil in my pan. Rub the top and then turn it over, just like I did with the biscuits in the skillet. So put them in the pan, roll them over. You see what I'm doing? And these will need to raise, well, like I said, if it was the other yeast, it'd be about 30 minutes, and these would be double in size. And uh, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take for them to double. It may take an hour. But like I said, it normally only takes about 30 minutes. I'm 
and just kind of rolling that up so it's smooth on the top. And making sure that it's got oil on the top and turning it over. the rest of the dough and work in a little flour just pull it over and push it into itself take it by the edge push it into the middle of itself and then turn it over and then I just start squeezing it out into a long rope, kind of like. And if I have any dough left over, I usually save it and make fry bread. And you just pat it out in little patties and put it in a skillet with some oil and fry it up till it's brown and it's delicious okay so i'm gonna cut this in half set that there in the oil if your oil if you run out of oil you can always add a little more to the pan and I'm gonna have to do that I'm gonna have to do that you get flour onto the the roll so it won't stick to your hand and then dip him in the flour I may not have I'm gonna roll this cut these and see how many how they look in case I need some of that dough that's in that one just to even them out one, two, three, four. nope they're all about pretty good might need a little pinch in this one <laughs> flour him up rolling I don't someday I'm gonna figure this camera out Um, some other things that I'm going to try to, to uh, do is show you how I make some other things that we normally have for Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, I'm going to be doing some sweet potato, uh, sweet potato casserole that almost tastes more like a dessert than, a, than it does a vegetable. And um, also some... A cranberry salad if I can find the cranberries and some different things and uh, if you have anything that you'd like to see me make uh, just put a little message in on, on there and, and I'll see what I can come up with I've got to get two more in the pan. I don't think I'm going to have enough left to make me a fry bread. That's 
That's pretty little fry bread, but <laughs> I might whip him up and show you what he looks like when we come back. Because I'm going to get off of here when I get these all ready to raise. I'll show you what they look like. Okay. Oh, here's our rolls. And I'm going to set these over on the stove and uh, let these be raising and I'll time them and I'll let you know. Oh, and I want to tell you one other thing that I did. When the dough was raising, I, uh, it wasn't, it was like in about two inches or so from the top. I went ahead and took that, this rag and run it under some more hot water and wrung it out real good and, and recovered the bowl with, so it would be, stay nice and warm because it cools down after you have it on there for a while. But anyway, I'm going to hop back off of here and when we come back, we'll be ready to put those in the oven and see how they turn out, okay? Alrighty, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we're back again and the rolls have raised to the top of the pan. I've got the oven on uh, 375 and I'm going to bake these for about 20 minutes and then check them. And uh, <clears throat> if they're not quite done, we'll, I'll leave them a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for 20 minutes. I'm going to show you what I made out of that little piece of dough I had left. I put this in the little, I spread it all out with my hand and made a little circle and put it in the skillet and cooked it. And this is fry bread and it's good to eat with anything. Breakfast with eggs or just as a snack with butter on it. Anyway, that's, if, if you want to, if you have any left, you can always make you some fry bread. Or you can just make up the dough and make that. Now, I wanted to tell you on this recipe, you can cut it in half, and you don't have to make that big of a batch. Uh, if you just want to do a small pan and and uh, have about 10 rolls, you can do that. You can cut that recipe in half. So, I just wanted to tell you that in case you didn't. And also, what's nice about doing it in the mixer is you don't have to stand and knead and knead and knead it, which I can't do anymore. <laughs> but I used to, a long time ago, I used to knead all my bread by hand. But I, that's what I like about these mixers. But you can't do it with a little hand mixer. You've got to have these stand mixers to make your, your dough in. Okay, I'm going to hop off, and I'll be back when the rolls get done. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to take them out of the oven and see what they look like. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wonderful. That'll be some yummy eating. I wonder who I can give those to. <laughs> I wish she was all here so I could pass them out for everybody. Well, I'm going to get off for now and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye bye. Oh yeah, just one more thing I was going to tell you. I always put butter on the top of the rolls and um, I don't, what I usually do is put a, get a stick out of the refrigerator that's hard, uh, that's not soft, or else I melt it. And I don't have, I'm just going to show you. I just put some butter on this, this, and I want to butter all the tops of them. And that makes them really good. Oh, and I wanted to tell you something else. I just jumped the gun when I hopped off. I wanted to tell you one more thing. I ate that little piece of fry bread, and I'm telling you it was delicious. Delicious. You've got to try that. Okay, I hope you all try these and 
fix them for Thanksgiving, even if you can't have all your family over. Maybe you can at least have them for what family's there, and I know they'll really appreciate them. So, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>